who wants to talk Pokemon. Um, two new Pokemon games were unveiled <laughs> as uh, as part of the latest Pokemon Direct, uh, with the first uh, game being being announced being a remake of the fourth generation titles Diamond and Pearl, uh, being remade into Brilliant Diamond, which doesn't really roll off the tongue as much as I think they thought, and uh, Shining Pearl. Uh, the second title was Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is an open world game set in a feudal time period of... Um, it, it, so it's the same region as Diamond and Pearl is the Sinnoh region, but within a feudal time period. Uh, according to Game Freak, the brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl games are set to be faithful recreations of the original titles, but with a chibi art style that kind of reminded me, at least, of, um, of the Link's Awakening remake they did a year or two years ago. Something like that. I think two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was, the, um, was pre-COVID. I know that for a fact. And uh, Legends Arceus is is opposed uh, to be a uh, bit of a wild divergence from the mainline titles in that it's an unrestricted open world. It has stealth mechanics, uh, catching Pokemon without entering battles, and more. And probably it's probably not like the most unique thing, but they're kind of um, shaking things up a little bit with having the three starter Pokemon be from different generations. So it's a Pokemon from the second, the fifth, and the seventh, with those specifically being. Uh, Cyndaquil, uh, Oshawott, and Rowlet, which are three of the best starters, uh, come at me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Legends Arceus is slated for 2000, sorry, uh, 2022, and uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are for later this year. So, panel of Pokemon enthusiasts, thoughts? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm... Control. I, okay. <laughs> you, go, you go on, Corey. You go on. Um, so, I, I mean, I... I, I uh... I was kind of stoked uh, like for the for the idea of an open world Pokemon game. Um, if they, I mean, obviously it's still in development and it's not coming out or not you know coming out till next year. Um, and with open world games, sometimes they can start off kind of rocky and then and then end up being really good. Um, so if that's the case with this one, then I really really hope that they uh, not only restrict it to one region, but you know, open up the entire world of Pokemon to explore. Um, and then with the, with the remakes, um, like I understand people being all like bent out of shape because of the graphics or whatever, but I don't, there, don't there hasn't, know. there hasn't been, uh, let me, let me finish. <laughs> right now, I'm like, no, I understand but their reasons are not legitimate um, because <laughs> because <laughs> because it is a game that has always been and always will be geared towards children. And if you don't like it, then tough noodles. I think, it's even more specific you know, than that. 10 I think, year yeah. old I can... children, practically babies. Yes, I, th I think even aside from like that, it's that this franchise has been the exact same thing for fucking over 20 years and expecting it to make some wild change from quality, like e even based on the hardware, whatever. Um, it, it is what it is. There this is 20 years of precedence and it's not going to break away from that. One people thing, that like it already thing, know what it is. The one thing that I'll also point out is that people are seemingly forgetting that the original Diamond and Pearl had a chibi art style, but in the 12 bit, was it 8 bit? On the DS, and it, no, no, sixteen bit is Super Six Nintendo, so I don't know what the DS was, but it was more well, like much. when you Two, maybe when you looked at the Diamond and Pearl running on the DS, when you weren't in battles, everybody looked chibi anyway. When you go into battles, they have full character models, so they're well, basically just doing what they did in, in the original Diamond and Pearl. Well, let's go even go into that because, like one one favorite thing. I guess let's call it rhetoric. One favorite bit of rhetoric is, oh, but they always had these great animations on the 2D sprites, and now the animations of the 3D stuff doesn't look as good. I'm just like, have you actually gone back and looked yeah. at how these things are animated? Because they're like weird stop half frame like tweens almost. Well, and they're not. You, some of them look fine. I'm not saying that they don't like. Some of them look weird for the time. Even some of them look better than others. But like. I don't know. Like people seem to just forget like what it was like to see as I think my boyfriend brought up a really good one, like one Pokemon where it was like a snake Pokemon. I don't remember which one where like just the head and the tail would kind of wiggle and animate, but nothing else would. And it was really jarring to look at. 
and like even at the time for him it was jarring so like or or like what i watched a clip recently that was like everyone going man i'm gonna, this game looks sucks i'm gonna go play the the old one and it's literally a 54 second long clip of like two attacks in a battle that feels like it's five hours it's yeah. just so surprising to me given that like, like as you said blaine like this is predominantly a kids game it's designed for kids mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean like only exclusively kids can play it but given that you would figure that the fan base wouldn't be so fucking toxic it's like every time a new game comes out like it happened especially with um with sword and shield um Every, everyone's just so fucking talk to you. don't it's like, know what they want they don't know what they want they don't they don't because like literally it's it, it the problem is that and they'll never admit this the problem is is this new game is not giving me nostalgic feels i hate it yeah you know it, it's 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 just the stupidest crap and i i just enjoy your enjoy games just enjoy games literally. guys just play games and build a bridge oh, and get over it <laughs> oh no he has digivolved oh, no. to a new form oh no <laughs> we just lost camera okay good i was afraid that like your computer soft shut off or something for a second oh, not very not very soft oh no it's um, all good what it did say it really? did say really? internal heat too high let it yeah that scared it me for, but i guess it meant the camera <laughs> yeah um, really 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 quick on the whole pokemon thing and people being like pissed People have been asking to go back to Diamond and Pearl slash the Sinnoh region forever. And exactly. when the Pokemon company goes, look, guys, we're giving you two goddamn games in the Sinnoh region. Aren't you happy? And the Internet looks at the camera and collectively goes, no. What the fuck were you asking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, what when the Sword shit were you asking out, for that? It was literally... And not, I mean, you're right about what you're saying, but even to like simplify it, like when Sword and Shield came out, one of the biggest complaints was one of the biggest complaints, partially based on a hacked preview build made to look shittier than it was, was I just love bringing that up every single time this conversation comes up because it's so fucking stupid. Don't forget the tree, happened. Blaine. Don't forget I, the tree. I, Oops. I, I don't forget about the tree. Like, when Sword and Shield came out, other than that, one of the biggest complaints was like, oh, why can't it, like, you know, why can't it go back? Why can't it be more like how I remember it and stuff like that? I don't like these changes or the, and the changes that are good or like not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Now they're like, okay, here's a game that is like an open world Pokemon game that people have been asking for literally, I think, since we were all like teenagers. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and they're also making a straight remake of like a Diamond one for Pearl. one remake which the is Dinosaur not even like remakes or one for one remakes like they went yeah. on saying that <laughs> like, which which like people some people are asking for but also like let's keep in mind too like diamond and pearl are not exactly the most popular fucking pokemon thing like which is but, a depressing thing but this, whoa, whoa. this is probably going to be a non-issue with the remake but i remember my biggest issue with the original diamond and pearl and maybe platinum fixed it but even if you increase the text size in um in the options the game just ran so freaking slow like battles took 10 times as long as, the, as the, than they needed to so that's probably why i have not pent up like aggression towards that generation but i have a bit of a sour taste in my mouth but that's it's i, I would assume that's going to be fixed it's a rough generation i mean i never played black and white one and two but i've heard those games are just kind of they're okay diamond and pearl have i mean every pokemon has its diehard fans and every pokemon is literally made for like to be someone's first pokemon so you know i get it but like i i've, I've always heard eh, things like you know but and another thing i want to bring up though while we're talking about this as far as remakes is do people my boyfriend actually brought this up recently again do people realize how many fucking remakes we've gotten in this franchise compared to other franchises how many franchises have given you like because what we've gotten at least two remakes of the original games maybe three i just don't know off the top of my head i think we've it's gotten the, two because we've got let's go which is a remake of the original games but we also have fire red and leaf green yeah you i was have, just about to say you have, um, you know, the Heart Gold Soul Silver remakes. Now we have the Diamond and Pearl remakes. You had the Hoenn remakes. Best like, gen. You literally have all of these different remakes, and like, you have all these different remakes. And I mean, like, we're still complaining. Like, can we get a remake of something? Like, because what? Final, let's go. Let's talk about Final Fantasy. Like that series. You want to talk about crying over not having remakes. We have been begging for a remake of like five more so six for fucking decade for a decade. 
because John is from, starving. Like, he needs it. We need Please Final Fantasy VI John. in the Octopath <laughs> engine, but I digress. Fucking, we like, I mean, we just got like what, are, what is essentially a pseudo sequel to Octopath and Final Fantasy Tactics at the same time, so that's good. But like, we. I we, still have yet to try that demo. I need to download me it. Me neither. If, you, if a, you like an isometric tactics game, you'll most likely enjoy it. Okay. I did enjoy tricky. Octopath Traveler through and through. I, I loved that game. So, Do you like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics? I've Ogre? never played Final Fantasy Tactics. Then I don't know if you're gonna like this. It's a okay. Kind of okay. Suit. It's a different kind of feel. I was a little on the fence about it when I saw the video, so we'll see. Yeah. To um yeah. to shift the conversation a little bit, what's everyone thinking about Legends Arceus? Um, cool. the people, the people who just keep talking about how rough it looks. This is a year out. Someone pointed out in the SGC. I think it was Beta. Beta pointed out we never see a Pokemon game a year out. They're always a couple months. And the fact that they showed this when it's a year out. And also, please remember, people, we're in fucking COVID. Like, shit's not going to, like, there's a big chance this might not come out at the beginning of 2022. Because if they're still working on it. You go on, Corey, then I got something to add. Oh, sure. I just wanted to say, I just want to add what something to Sarah said. And it, the fact that we are in COVID is like, I feel like people's entitlement has been amplified so much mm-hmm. oh to the point God, where really like, has. I'm bored. I have nothing to do every day because we're stuck in the house all the time. Give me more video games now, 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 now. And if it's not what I like, then fuck you. It's like wow is dealing with that because you know they're pissed that blizzard's not delivering on small things that they said that they were going to do and it's like we're in covid they had to switch to work from home they're working on nine on 9.1 to get that out anyway sorry go but that's been annoying me too go go (laughs) blank um i mean something i feel like i've seen again like i've seen a joke that's like oh um Funko Pops versus Nendroids, and it's the trailer clip from Diamond and Pearl remake, and it's the clip from uh, Link's Awakening. And I'm just, I laugh every time I see someone retweet that in earnest because if you look really close, there's a little message that says, not representative of final product. And I'm convinced that adult Pokemon fans can't fucking read. Even like, though it's required to play uh, the entire it game. Feels yes. required for Pokemon. <laughs> like, like I get bringing, I, and I get like how, cause like there's a, there's two sides to that. There's when you use that as like a little hidden away fine print so that you can have something that's not actually really what your game is. But this isn't that, this is literally like, Hey, this is some rough early stuff. And it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's that rough. I think it looks fine. But as far as if it's not what people like is up to people's par of quality, that text is there for a reason. This is not the final product. This game is like is still being worked on. Yeah, because I saw I, is your problem. I saw people like trying to make the argument of like, oh, and like it's missing some lighting and shaders and stuff that Link's yeah, Awakening has. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. It's not a finished product. Like you, mm-hmm. these people should know better. If I you're sharing like this- that post in earnest, you should know better. Just plain and simple. I feel well, like this conversation is even cap the one that says the text on it. <laughs> yeah. on today, sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like this conversation is just like even completely reversed from what it used to be where um, developers would put their games and it looked too good. Then you get the, then you yeah. actually get the game and it doesn't look like what the fuck, what's up with this downgrade. And yeah. now they're trying to, I'm going to give them the, the ben- extreme benefit of the doubt. Now they're trying to be more uh, honest about it. Now just like, Oh, this game just looks like shit. Just like, well, fuck it. What, what do you want them to do? I mean, it's yeah. development. It shit changes either yeah. way. Um, people what, wanna, one like, small thing I oh, I'm sorry go ahead Blaine well, I was just to say people want to bring up like too like oh well Nintendo has basically infinite money so they have no excuse and it's like do you understand that Nintendo is not the only company involved in this that Game Freak makes the game I, I know they're not making the Diamond and Pearl remake but just oh no no they're, they're not making Legends I believe no no, no Game, Freak, Game Freak's doing Legends Game Freak's not doing the Diamond and Pearl remake yeah. There is but, there's another team doing the Diamond and Pearl, but Junitsu I just pushed your name, I'm so sorry. Junitsu Masuda is a director on the Diamond and Pearl remake, but Game Freak's not doing it. Yeah, okay. who is that that guy is one of, is I think believe the original. He is the, the he, yeah, he is he is the director of the originals. Uh I think they yeah. said the Pokemon Cafe team is doing it or something. But but my point here is that like 
you have Nintendo owns is publishing. You have Game Freak making most of the games. You have um, the Pokemon Company, which I believe owns the anime rights as well as I think they just own the general IP and characters. But I just I don't know 100 percent how that works. This is not as simple as one company give money and make thing better. This is three, at least two multi billion dollar companies and one like I don't even know if I because like I, I like, can, let's can. Would I be wrong to say that Game Freak started as like an indie and stayed an indie, but was basically published solely by Nintendo for the longest time? I think so. Like, I as think... far as scope and size, not like to diminish what they do. I just mean as far as like, so people get a realistic expectation of like mm-hmm. why they pretty much make one or two games like every so many years. I mean, they they, right. make, they make games that sell like crazy, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're like this big monolithic company. It's like they're exactly. still relatively on the small side. Like for the majority of their... Like, there's other Pokemon games on consoles, whatever, that other companies have made. They've been primarily, up until the Switch, I mean, you can still consider the Switch a handle, but they've made handheld games. And swapping over from that, it's like full 3D yeah. console quality yeah. games. It's, it's a big jump for a company that's been doing that for 20 plus years. Um, right. And we haven't even we haven't even mentioned um, Pokemon Snap. The fact Which that looks fantastic. It looks fantastic, <laughs> and my childhood is screaming because I love that game. <laughs> but Corey, Jesus. that one looks good, and the other one looks <laughs> bad. So that makes me right. Corey, if, even if though ever... Pokemon Snap is an on rails experience, specifically constructed around a rail, and you right. can't just move everywhere. <laughs> I'm right. Oh, exactly. Rail. If, if you go back to college, um, <laughs> you, use your port for your portfolio for photography. Just use your Pokemon Snap pictures. Yeah. Well, and now you'll be able to <laughs> upload those to Twitter. So it's just like, oh my god, I'm going to do that all the time. Well, no. I'm going to do that all the time. You guys are just going to see my feed. And it's going to oh, be nothing. There it goes again. There no. goes. It's going to be nothing but Pokemon Snap pictures on my feed we'll for like this, Dominic, a promise. month. <laughs> one um, uh, one wait, comparison wait, I think is we, a little... sorry, before we before we move off from Pokemon really quick. I don't know if anybody else watched this, but me and my coworker watched it during our shift. The Post Malone Pokemon concert was an experience. I didn't watch it, but I, <laughs> I didn't I watch it either. It yeah. so I like Post weird. Malone's music, so Post Malone's was a pretty chill, so dude. Weird. So it was so. So, like, they did a mixture of, like, making him Pokemon-fied, so he kind of looks like a cross between, like, one of those, like, heavy metal trainers and, like, a bastard child of Lieutenant Surge. Like, it was very weird. He's Professor Post. <laughs> but, like, they 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 weird enough, I'm 99% sure they did m- motion capture on him, because he had these weird, like, humanistic movements that Pokemon characters don't normally have. <laughs> so it was so weird. And also, he sang, he sang the song where it's like, uh, like, where it's like, it's like something s- s- like s- s- sex in it. And in a Pokemon show? And it, oh my god. It oh was, yeah, because it's, it's, it's a cover of a Hootie and the Blowfish song, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but he actually rocked that cover. I ain't gonna lie. That was a really, really good I haven't good heard cover. it. I'm not, like, talking shit you know on it. But, like, it was so weird. And we were watching it, and I'm like, so does this make Post Malone canon in the Pokemon universe now? He's definitely a VTuber <laughs> yes. now. Like, uh, it was, it was, it, it was just an experience. And if you can, if you have 13 minutes, yes, it's 13 fucking minutes. If you have 13 minutes of your time, you can find it on YouTube on the official Pokemon channel. Just sit there and watch it. Maybe pop an edible. I don't know. That Maybe might be pop an edible. I'm good. I'm so that good. That might make it a crazier experience. But yeah, I just um, I just wanted to point that out because people seem to be forgetting that that also happened. I just want back to, to um, go back to Legends Arceus real quick. One okay. comparison I think is probably a little silly to make is uh everyone calling it like oh it's breath of the wild and like maybe yeah they use like the same camera thing yeah um, just, like, like, it, 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 where it's like it feels it feels like that one meme where the dude's looking up at the butterfly he's like is this a butterfly it's like is this breath of the wild is it it's an open Boy, world is this me, breath of the up. wild <laughs> <laughs> i saw i literally have that I in my notes <laughs> wow, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, Dom, you want to go ahead and give your thoughts overall on uh, either announcement? I sure. I, Dom's thoughts. My oh, fudge. <laughs> no, no, so, you got this. so with Pokemon, I grew up with it, but there was a point where I kind of gave up on Pokemon, and that was like right before Diamond and Pearl came out. So I definitely missed all of that, and then I came back when they remastered um, 
Ruby and Sapphire, but I messaged my friends last night, um, like their experience with Diamond and Pearl and what they think about the whole remastering. And they've been excited for that. They've been looking forward to it. And like, they're not part of that, like that toxic, like fan base that like happens with almost every fan base really. But when I asked mm-hmm. them like, what makes it like kind of special to you guys and like look at my notes it, to them, it's like the music, um, the Pokemon themselves. Um, the lore is pretty cool and deep. Uh, quoting my friend, Cynthia is an iconic champion. And, <laughs> and, and I quote. <laughs> Damn it, Jose, I just saw. <laughs> I was like looking over at the screen too. And I was like, why is Corey on the house on there? And then I just fucking realized. <laughs> This whole time, <laughs> not the whole time. I've been, I've been like, I've, I've been periodically putting it in and off, like a little glitch Son effect. Of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, what? I um, hate for, you. For I hate audio you listeners, so for audio <laughs> listeners, I've been intermittently replacing Corey's uh, camera feed with the uh, image of Corey in the house. <laughs> uh, Corey in the house is best anime. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Basically, um, for my friends, it was one of those things once they kind of saw how the remaster was, it brought those like feelings back of when they first played it, and they're super excited to get those. I mean, there were more fans of the um, Platinum that came out, but um, basically, all I'm saying is like those, like that nostalgia feeling, which Nintendo is really digging at for money, but it's it's there for them. And like, I really appreciate that for at least my friends. And I'm going to get Diamond or Pearl just to get that experience that I've definitely missed out on. Yeah, that's something I'm nice. looking forward to. Is like Same. I was never especially a big fan of Diamond and Pearl, but I am interested to use this with quality of life improvements that I can like actually be like, okay, well, let's see what I missed maybe if not ever beating it. Because I even bought what it years later and I still never beat it. What I'm interested in, and you brought it out, Dom, is will they be adding platinum content as DLC? That's something I would imagine it being there by so. default because like the. Um, the Ruby and Sapphire remakes, they had basically all the content plus some more from Emerald. So I would imagine but that like, I feel case. like they would have also teased um is it is it is it Garatina? Was Giratina, it Garatina? Yeah. Uh I feel like they would have teased that. But they but there was like nothing relating to Platinum in the whole thing. I was so, curious if Booker was gonna be in it, because I remember him only being in Platinum. Yeah, so that's my thing. You made me thing. think of Bioshock, and I'm disappointed. Because, <laughs> like, my thing is... Yourself. Here's the thing. If they make Platinum content DLC, and they charge, like, fourteen ninety nine for it, because Platinum added a lot more than people think it did. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't know. I would pay that. But at the same time, I'm hoping that it does what all the other remakes have done and just adds Platinum in, and they're not, like, showing it yet to kind of, like, surprise people closer to launch and be like, oh, hey... Both Diamond and Pearl have the platinum content in it. If the game, if the remakes were forty dollars, like I originally thought they would be, I would probably agree with you. No, but considering they're sixty and I, we don't yet know like how much is involved in it, I don't know if I'd be okay with them charging extra for the platinum stuff. No, yeah, yeah, and I totally get why that's sketchy for some for some people. I'm just curious if they would do that because if they're saying that these are like one to one remakes, they're they're just saying they're wondering when we make some diamond and pearl. That makes me wonder if they're not touching platinum content. When like yeah. platinum adds one of the also coolest the... areas in Pokemon ever, which was the like weird in between universes thing, to where you're like crawl, where, 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 where you're like walking on the walls and like doing all that crazy stuff, which was so cool. And I'm just like, so are they only doing diamond and pearl, or they're not saying that they're adding platinum in it yet? Mm-hmm. Unless they're saving that for like maybe like one of the last trailers or like gameplay f- footage or like a next Pokemon Direct or something. Oh, when does the game uh, officially come out? I uh, later this of, year. Yeah, late 2021. Okay, so there could be a chance for Platinum like to be snuck in there some way. I mean, even if they didn't necessarily show it in the trailers, like I, I, my assumption is that it's going to be in there just based off the precedent from the uh, Omega Ruby Al- Alpha Sapphire. Yeah. yeah. Um, so go ahead and move on. Unless I, does anyone else have any closing thoughts on Pokemon? I didn't realize it was sixty dollars. It is that's $60. my final thought. Happy birthday, Pokemon! <laughs> my final thought <laughs> is: birthday. if you're 
if you're one of these adult fans and you're getting to like i don't know in the the thread below whenever jose posts this on twitter or on youtube or whatever if you're already typing away like well here's why you're wrong and the pokemon company is really good about i don't fucking care i don't care shut the fuck up you're an adult acting like a five-year-old not even a 10-year-old like the games are aimed at a five-year-old you need to just stop and examine your life because you are ge- you are getting so riled up over a game that was never made for you once you pass the age of 10. And it's right. fucking like... It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Yeah. I was well, That's the word I was looking for. People really just need to... We, we, I, I don't know who to blame for this. Maybe our generation. I don't even know. But people need to just like stop and okay, think right. for a moment. Yeah, like I'm now I'm now I'm stepping into the my old person shoes. I'm like back in magic. These, these fucking hey, zoomers don't this, know, understand what it was like <laughs> to fight a Pokemon for 20 minutes and then lose. <laughs> right. Everything's instant gratification. <laughs> no, but I'm but I'm just <laughs> like hurt. literally on everything that because because. Let, let's look at it this way. It could be about Pokemon. It could be about Zelda. It could be about Resident Evil. Whatever the fuck you want to be, it's about. It could be about not even game issues. Just like for a moment, think before you post. Just like don't don't post stupid shit because you could be trapped in your emotions, whatever stupid emotions that you're feeling in that moment, and then you're on Twitter or whatever, and you post it, it's out there. It's it's on the ethosphere. You know, it's not going to come back, it, or it is going to come back to bite you. But it's you can't take it back, is what I mean. Mm-hmm. Just I would even just go. It, I would even just go as far as say just to, to wrap it. Just like just don't be a toxic asshole. It's just yeah, exactly. And it's like, it, for instance, it's like me being on me being a public figure on the internet. I have a responsibility to think before I post. Every single time, if it's not adding something positive to my everyday life or to other people's everyday life, if it's just negative rantings that's meant to build clout and to piss people off, that doesn't make any sense to me. That literally, it you're you're spending so much energy pushing negativity into the world when you could be doing so much more and productive things with your life. Bless you. It's just. Ah. Like, if, like <laughs> I, I can't agree more because like one of the one of the things I started doing was instead of just vomiting th- stream of consciousness onto Twitter whenever I was mad about something, if you do genuinely feel strongly and it's and it's not coming from a place of bad faith, but it's actually something you really feel like strongly about as far as what, a quality of a piece of media or something like that, write up a critical essay, a critical analysis essay. You don't even have to make it like a video necessarily. Just write something up put that somewhere and put it somewhere so you can have it in context. You can look it over and you can really process those emotions while you're getting it out. And if you still feel that way after you write it, then post it. If not, then you got the emotions out. Like alternative. No one's one's saying you can't criticize Nintendo or the Pokemon company or game freak. It's just actually know what you're talking about and stop with this stupid rhetoric bullshit of, Oh, well I heard from this guy on the internet that like, uh, oh, Ruby and Sapphire ran at 60 frames a second, so that's why. Like, it's stupid shit. I'm making shit up at this point, but that's what it's gotten to. Also, don't don't ruin other people's fun. Just because yeah. you just because just you, you have like a, something doesn't yeah. mean someone else isn't like freaking the fuck out about it yeah. and are super excited. You are entitled to your opinion, but just because you have an opinion doesn't instantly make you right. Yep. I think I think as the yeah. great Nick. Nick Fury said, I see that 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 the council has made a decision but seen as the stupidest decision I've chosen to ignore it. I thought anyway. you were gonna pull out like an actual philosopher or no. author. No. All right. No. All right. Sam, we Jackson, get Sam Jackson, man. He's got some nuggets of wisdom. And that is a nugget wisdom. of wisdom. Seen as it's a Jose, stupid ass right. decision. Yes, yes, we, we got it. We got to move on. <laughs> <laughs>